Shane, where would you like to go today? You know, the 1980s had some of the greatest television shows, especially for young boys growing up. Aside from great shows like Battlestar Galactica and A-Team and all these great, great shows, we had a show called Knight Rider. And as a young boy, all I could ever dream about owning was a black Trans Am tricked out with a little red scanner on the front talking to me in William Daniels' voice. Uh, this car could do anything. It could jump through buildings. It could turbo boost. It could ski mode on two wheels. It could do everything. And it, of course, had to talk to David Hasselhoff all the time, cracking jokes, being a great little companion and sidekick. Well, I never got to get said Trans Am, even though today you can buy complete kit replicas, the black Trans Am with all the little dashboards and goodies. 50, 60 grand is all it's going to take. Later on, when things became a little more technologically savvy, Mio Technology came out with the Knight Rider GPS. Now, re remember, this is... 2008. What better possible format could you imagine for a global positioning satellite system that talks to you other than KIT? So, Mio Technology created this little Knight Rider GPS, complete with licensed audio, licensed voice. William Daniels himself did the voice. He, This poor guy, I, I think to myself, uh, what this guy must have gone through to record the audio for this device because it, it touted 30,000 different names, male and female. So whatever your name was, you could make this GPS unit in William Daniels' voice talk to you in your name. Now, unfortunately, it wasn't very conversational. This is not an AI box for by any stretch or means of the imagination. But for a brief minute, those of us who grew up and fantasized about owning this black t-top with cool voice and ai and all that stuff we had an opportunity to kind of live that dream with this gps unit so before we take a closer look at the unit itself in operation let's take a look at the visual brochure and i'll tell you all about this little guy the knight rider gps is a global positioning system released by mio technology on september 24th 2008 priced at a reasonable 269 dollars msrp this device promised the GPS experience set in the shadowy world of the Knight Rider, where the Knight Industries 2000s, or kit if you prefer, would guide you safely to your destination. Not only did the device promise to speak to you in the authentic voice of kit, played by William Daniels, but also speak to you directly by name. Now who wouldn't want that? The device looks great, sporting a nice looking 4.3 inch touchscreen encased in a black kit-like shell, complete with two red scanner lights along the left and right side that light up in time to the speech, giving it a true Knight Rider feel. During the initial boot up, you'll even get a movie showing you Kit's scanner in action complete with the authentic sound effects from the shell. The Knight Rider GPS is powered by a mini USB car power adapter that can run for a bit on its own with the internal battery. Along the top, an SD card slot for uploading additional maps and device updates, of which this device will no longer be receiving. Other than the power plug and SD card slot, there is only a power button to round out the build of the GPS. Shane, I am really looking forward to this. Mounting options are limited based on a small mounting slot near the power port. Audio from the system pipes out through a small but rather loud speaker on the back of the device, which bounces nicely off the windshield into the passenger area of the car. Unlike your phone or modern GPS device, there is no way to send the audio to your vehicle's speakers. The touchscreen is mostly responsive when using menus, but during operation the screen can be sometimes unresponsive. The Knight Rider GPS was discontinued less than a year after it was released due to Mio's failure to pay licensing fees to continue using the TV property. Mio originally continued to sell the device after non-payment, so a lawsuit ensued. Mio's parent company was involved in another patent dispute at the time as well, so even if they had paid the fee, they may have had to discontinue the device. Supposedly, Mio released an update to the Knight Rider GPS unit that apparently removed all the infringing content, essentially turning the device into a standard GPS without the voice 
or sound effects, making an original non-updated unit like the one shown here rather valuable. At the time of this video, Knight Rider GPS was fetching anywhere between 300 and 400 US dollars on eBay. Reviews of the device called the GPS functionality average, maybe a bit less, when compared to similarly priced units. Some of the features were disabled when using Mr. Daniels as the voice, and many reviewers dinged the product because of it. Changing to the generic male or female voice would restore the full functionality. Some old technology like vinyl or CRT TVs can continue to be useful, but this device's days of guiding me as kit appear to be over, as it wouldn't even lock onto a satellite, making the Knight Rider GPS a neat collector's piece at best. While dedicated GPS devices are largely a thing of the past thanks to technology like Google Maps and Android Auto, they represent an interesting period in history between maps and mobile, and if you're going to represent, you might as well do it based on a kick-ass talking car driven by the Hoff. Okay, so now you know almost everything that I know and maybe a little bit more than I do about this little unit. Of course, the fun is in actually firing this guy up and having William Daniels talk to you and see just what old GPS technology was really like. Could it have been as bad as we remember it compared to our beloved mobile devices? Let's find out. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this guy. Um, as I mentioned before, we do not have a GPS available because the satellites cannot be found. I don't know why that might be, but for the sake of argument, we're going to say that this guy is not going to actually provide us with any directions. So it might be difficult to show you around properly, but there are a few things that we can do, even though this thing does not have access to a GPS satellite. So as you can see, you can, of course, uh, drag along with the touch screen do a few things. You can see points of interest, things of that nature along the path. Um, of course, you can uh, zoom in and out, give yourself a little bit bigger view of your surrounding areas. And again, it's not super speedy, it's not super fast, honestly, but uh, again, it's what we had at the time. So you can go 2D or 3D. And again, of course, you can adjust to get a more um, finite view of what you're looking at. Okay. So there's, uh, you can navigate, you can get details of the locations, things of that nature. You can save those locations. Uh, let's see. Um, so you can pick things directly off the map, add to the trip, add to the route, all the sorts of things that we've gotten used to seeing with GPS. So let's take a look at the menus. This is what I usually like to see when I'm looking at old technology, what sort of things were available at the time. And this also gives you an opportunity to see what is available overall. So the main menu itself has two different pages, the home, favorites, recents. You know, most of these are, are pretty self-explanatory. And of course we have preferences, which we're gonna go ahead and go in there now because frankly, that is a, a big interest to me as to what this thing may have been capable of. Route options, you can of course go by fastest time or shorter distance, whether you have a preference for freeways, whether you wanna look at toll roads, uh, unsealed roads, ferry routes, um, you can set some basic driver alerts, and you can enable GPS logging map display. So you can choose from a variety of color schemes as well as choose day or night which seems to just sort of toggle the brightness display. We're gonna go ahead and say day just to keep this thing bright. Auto zoom on maps, keep north at the top. That's actually something that I truly appreciate. And then which map pack that you're using. All right. Map points of interest, you can select which points of interest you want to see. Colleges, general points of interest, golf courses, turn all off, turn all on. Might speed things up a little bit, right? Volume control. So we actually amazingly have a pretty, pretty high volume on this thing. 
So I make it low, make it high. Test. Somewhere in the middle. Test. Test. And touchscreen response, whether you have an audio response when you hit the touchscreen. And I've turned, yeah, there you go. So you can hear beeps. I turned it back off. Um, as you can see, like I said, it's not always as responsive as it could be. And speaking keyboard letters. We'll leave that on because while it's completely annoying, it's also kind of fun for this particular demo. Screen, you can set your brightness in the day and the night. Again, nothing, um, nothing particularly exciting going on. Alerts for your points of interest. All right, GPS status, which by the way is nada. No GPS signal for me. And you can choose a couple of different modes for getting said GPS signal. So we'll save language for last because that's where a lot of the fun stuff happens. Um, startup, you can elect whether you want to see that movie we showed you earlier. Language selection screen, standard stuff. Is that an under power? Yeah. So right now we're on external power because I've got it plugged into a battery. Keyboard type, use QWERTY, alphabetical order. Units, for those of you, for, for those the rest of the world who's not using imperial uh, numbers, you can actually go back to something that the rest of the world's using. Tutorial, a little about, saved info, shop demo, which we're going to get in a minute, and then greeting name. This is how you choose how the unit addresses your name. And so you can actually, so you can actually search. S-H-S-N. Oops. Uh, yeah, I'm doing this over my shoulder here. So, um, A-N-E. So, so you can see that. Let's see. Um. Then you can preview it, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go back here. Try to come up with a weird name like uh, Jamal. J -A -M -A -L. Sorry, no, not for you, Jamal. How about Jasmine? A -S nope, Jasmine's in here. Jasmine, where would you like to go today? All right, so that's kind of cool. So you can choose, and there's supposed to be, if I remember right, and I don't have any um, data to back this up, but I believe it was 30,000 names that poor William Daniels had to record for this. And then, of course, you can disable or enable the LED lights. I imagine if you're driving at night, that could get kind of uh, bothersome. And that's all we have for available preferences right now, based on our current situation. All right, so let's go back into our preferences again. And I told you that I wanted to show you something about the language. Now, one of the things that really bothered people in early reviews of this product was the fact that you wouldn't get street names and some very specifics when you're using guided navigation. And the whole trick turned out to be that if you were using kit as your voice, you would only get very generic instructions. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So we're gonna go ahead and put this thing into shop demo, which is the only way you're gonna get any sort of turn by turn because we have no GPS. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this on. And I don't know, we'll just say Washington. We'll now restart in shop demo mode. So this is what you would see if you went to uh, the store and wanted to see what this guy might look like when it was um, in operation. Did that go? It's so hard to tell. Shane, where would you like to go today? Okay, so now we're in demonstration mode, and now it'll actually pretend like we're driving around here. Give you an idea. Calculating route. Turn right, then turn right. All right, so it says right on Stewart Street. In 300 feet, turn right. Turn right. Continue two-thirds of a mile. Right, so we have some very, um, very generic instructions here when we're listening to it in William Daniels' kit voice, right? However, if you go into, I'm trying to remember in shop mode if you can do this. I thought you could. Oops, dang it. I'm gonna keep this thing steady. Let's move to a female voice. Let's go to some, let's just do a generic female voice. Turn right, Stewart Street. And there you turn go. Right. As you can see, now it's actually naming the streets as we would hope that In it would. 300 feet, turn right, First Avenue. So, yeah, that was one of the things turn that, right. 
That was one of the things that really freaked out the early reviews of this device was the fact that turn by turn wasn't giving you the street names. Continue two thirds of a mile. In this case, though, once you leave William Daniels' kit voice, you're actually getting the proper street names, um, or at least more of them, than you were when you were uh, doing it in kit mode. In one quarter of a mile, turn right, Broad Street. Yeah, so now we're getting the proper, uh, now we're getting the proper speech. So there you go. I mean, I'm not sure there's really much else we can show here, other than maybe if I do a full power off, you guys can see that sort of intro movie. I think if I keep it held down for a bit, when we fire up next time, it will be properly a like a full boot. And it may not happen because it's in that demo mode. We could have to probably turn that back. There we go. Night Rider. There we go. So we're still in that demo mode, and we're still with the uh, the woman's voice. Now imagine if you had to go through all of that to get to your GPS, it'd probably make you lose your mind. This is not a fast-acting machine here. Turn right, then turn right. Oh, interesting. The full power-off changed our voice back. But you can see he is definitely not... He's not telling us First Avenue, Stewart Turn Street. Right. Anyway, like, you, like I said, you can hear it. It's very loud. And when it bounces off your windshield, it even sounds louder. Continue two-thirds of a mile. Well, that's it. Listen, um, we could sit here all day and look at this guy, but... Um, Shane, I am really looking forward to this. You hear that? He's really looking forward to this. So, <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed looking at this Knight Rider uh, GPS unit. Please like the video, subscribe. Check the notification bell to get future videos. And um, if you like this sort of older technology, let me know. If you only want to see newer stuff, let me know. Listen, we love your comments and we really appreciate watching. Thanks so much. I'm Shane Armonroe and we'll see you next time.